It's time for my week 13 NFL predictions. You're watching the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment. Hello and welcome to the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment. Alas, it is time for my 2016 week 13 NFL predictions. Unfortunately, I was not able to put out this video on Wednesday or Thursday, but it's okay because I'm here now. And don't worry, I picked the Cowboys. I tweeted it out before the game, I believe. I'm not sure my tweet ran through because I wasn't in cell phone range apparently, but if it didn't, trust me, I had the Cowboys and you can go to my pigskin pick'em entry and check that the Cowboys got it done good. I had them winning 20 to 17, they won 17 to 15. Now with that said, let's talk about this upcoming week and and this is going to be a difficult week indeed. There are a good amount of toss-up games this week in which you have home teams that have a worse record than the team that is going up against them. But you know that they can beat them. And do you have the balls to pick them? I have balls. Do you have the balls? about to find out uh, as this video progresses. Last week... I had an okay week, a pretty good week overall. Uh, I went 11 and 5 straight up, which is good. Uh, against the spread, 7 and 7, not great. I'd love to be above 500, but my guarantee tees were 5 and 2. Uh, so we're making a lot of money over here. Hopefully, we continue to make money this week. So, with that said, let's start with my Sunday predictions. And we have the Kansas City Chiefs traveling to Atlanta and taking on the Atlanta Falcons. The first case in which we have a home team with a worse record, but you know they can beat the other team. The Falcons won last week very impressively against the Arizona Cardinals 38-19. to Now they host the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Chiefs had an impressive victory of their own as they defeated the Denver Broncos on Sunday Night Football in what was an overtime spectacle. But I believe this overtime spectacle drained this football team. I mean, that was a, a hard-fought game, a tough game. It, it went almost all the way to the end of overtime. There was a chance this game could have tied. I think they're, the Chiefs are going to be emotionally drained, physically drained. Yes, they've had a week to recover, but man, I mean, this is just exhausting. And they're now traveling to Atlanta, where, I mean, they're playing really well overall right now. And the thing is with Atlanta that I like is no matter what they're going to score their fair share amount of points. I mean there's only been one game this season where they scored less than 24 and that was in Philadelphia. Outside of that they're going to get their points okay and I know what I'm going to get from the uh, from the Falcons offensively. The Chiefs offensively I'm not too sure and I don't buy that they're going to be able to outpace the Atlanta Falcons. I just don't buy that too much so I like the Falcons to beat the Chiefs here although the Chiefs are still a very good football team. We move on to the San Francisco 49ers at the Chicago Bears in what will be the toilet bowl of this season. I mean, this is an awful game, an awful matchup. Both of these teams stink bad. I mean, so bad. I mean, there will not be one wide receiver on the football field that is worthy of being on a football field. That's what we're talking about here. The Bears wide receivers suck so bad, and this was held true and evident as they couldn't catch a ball to win a football game last week. Ten drops. And then the 49ers, oh, we know their wide receivers stink. So there's not going to be one wide receiver out on the field this game. Don't watch this game. Now, this game is interesting because who the hell are you going to pick? Are you going to pick the Bears or the 49ers here? And I decided to go with the Bears, okay? They're 2-3 and three at home, okay? So they win 40% of their games at home, and they beat the Vikings, and, you know, you, you, they beat the Lions. You know, although those are divisional matchups, but, you know, they can win. The 49ers haven't won since week one, and I do actually believe they're going to win next week against the New York Jets, which is going to be another horrible matchup. But anyway... Um, the 49ers, yes, Colin Kaepernick has been looking better, um, but I like, I think the best player on the football field, the most dynamic player, the player that's really going to change this game and win this game ultimately to me is Jordan Howe. Oh, the Chicago Bears just feed him. This 49er run defense has stunk the whole season. They're letting out five yards of carry still to this moment. Run the ball all over them. Don't ask Matt Barkley to do too much, and the Bears should win this game. But wow, both of these teams stink. 
we move on to the Philadelphia Eagles at the Cincinnati Bengals. And I like the Bengals here. Look, the Bengals are 3-2-1 and one at home. Uh, they've been pretty good. And that one, by the way, I believe that one was in London. So they're 3-2 and two at home. Uh, they've been pretty good at home. And they're a team that, yes, they're not very good. And they really miss A.J. Green. But they're not getting blown out. They're still very competitive. The Eagles, since starting 3-0, they're 2-6. They're not good at all. Uh, they're losing games. They weren't even close to Green Bay last week. Now you're talking about Jordan uh, Matthews possibly missing this game. I don't think you can buy the Eagles uh, at all right now. They're just too dangerous and not very good at all. Uh, give me the Cincinnati Bengals at home. Although they're not very good either, but I like them at home. We move on to the Denver Broncos at the Jacksonville Jaguars and Trevor Simeon will be out of this game. Paxton Lynch will have to step up, and that scares me a little bit. I thought he was just dreadful against the Atlanta Falcons. His stat line wasn't that bad. One touchdown, one interception, and whatnot. But if you watch the game, he appeared to be a quarterback that was just not ready to start anytime soon. But he has to start this week. Okay, so don't do too much. Game manage, and then don't you worry. Denver Broncos defense will take care of everything for you. Hey, Chris Harris Jr. and to keep to leave if he plays, just stick your foot out. And I guarantee you, Blake Bortles will throw a football off of your foot and it will end up in the hands of a Denver Broncos player. Blake Bortles will be begging. I mean, we'll just be giving you the ball, be begging you to take the ball. Please, here's an interception. Here's a fumble. Here's another interception. So just take advantage of that. And Paxton Lynch, just take care of business. Just manage the game. For once, I would agree with Chris Collins was saying, just let your defense and special teams win you the game. In this game, okay, yes, I agree with Chris Collins worth on that one. Uh, so I like the Broncos. Uh, this defense should be able to just limit Blake Bortles' dumbass. Uh, we move on to the Detroit Lions. Uh, at the New Orleans Saints. Don't worry, Blake Bortles won't see this. We move on to the Detroit Lions at the New Orleans Saints. And look, um, we have a interesting game here where I don't think the Lions are getting enough respect right now. Enough respect by everybody. I mean, this is a Lions team that, my God, they're 7-4. and one. They're on, uh, seven and four. They're on top of the NFC North. They're going to win the NFC North to me, especially after the Vikings lost on Thursday Night Football. And they're going uh, to New Orleans where I mean, they put up points against New Orleans for years now. I know in the playoff game back in 2011, New Orleans won easily, but since then, the Lions, I think they beat New Orleans twice in a row now, so this game frightens the hell out of me. But after what the Saints did last week, oh, I can't pick against them. 49 points on that Rams defense. Oh, the Saints are rolling. Maybe they're trying to make a little late playoff push, so I have to buy into that, and I have to pick New Orleans the Saints to win this game at home. We move on to the Houston Texans at the Green Bay Packers. And the Green Bay Packers, they showed up last week. They took care of business against the Philadelphia Eagles, much to my surprise. Now, uh, are they ready to go on a run? I believe so. Okay, I think that will be uh, the beginning of a run here. Defensively, now their players are starting to step up. I guess Demarius Randall was the key, the major key for their defense. I don't know. Uh, but apparently now they're playing well. Okay, so I'll buy into that. And, oh God, Brock Osweiler, first of all, this guy stinks so bad. I mean, he is in the bottom five of quarterbacks in the league. He's in the bottom five. It's not even close. Trevor Simeon is above him. And this guy's playing just terrible, just awful. And if I were them, first of all, you got to find a way to get out of this contract. They can actually. There is only thirty-six million guaranteed. I believe only fifty percent. Uh, he's already getting paid eighteen million this year. Uh, so next year, I mean, after next year, you can get rid of him. And also, I'm concerned for DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I I still believe he's still a very good player and. He is a free agent, not after this season, but after next season. Why the hell is he going to re-sign if Brock Osweiler is still the starter? Houston is now potentially, uh, they're in trouble of losing probably their best offensive player. So they got to figure things out quick uh, by next year at least, or he is gone. We move on. And I like the Packers to win this game. We move on. To the Los Angeles Rams at the New York, uh, no, in New England Patriots. Rams at the Patriots. And... Look, the Patriots should win this game pretty damn easily. Jared Goff. Uh, yeah, he had an okay game last week. Um, this stupid NFL YouTube channel, they uploaded a video saying Jared goes off. Jared Goff. Ha ha. You guys get it. Ha ha. No. 
uh, this guy is okay, but he's not going to beat Tom Brady in New England. Uh, assuming he plays, he should. He's questionable, but he's going to play. Now, Gronk, this is a big injury to Rob Gronkowski, and man, I'm starting to think of the Raiders could beat the Patriots in the AFC Championship game. We're not here to talk about that. Uh, the Patriots are going to win this game. Rams aren't good enough, and they showcase that to everyone. They displayed it as they just got whooped by the New Orleans Saints. Now you want to go to New England after you lost in New Orleans. Ugh. We move on to the Miami Dolphins at the Baltimore Ravens. Dolphins have won six straight games. Wow. But I think it comes to an end here. The Ravens' defense is very, very, very good. And they're very good at home. They're 4-2 and two at home this season. They just suck you into Baltimore where no one wants to go. I mean, as a human being, who the hell wants to go to Baltimore? They suck you in there, uh, and you just don't play very well. That's their move. And I think they do that move yet again here, and they beat the Miami Dolphins. They suffocate Ryan Tannehill a little bit. It'll be low scoring, uh, but I expect the Ravens to get it done. We move on to the Buffalo Bills at the Oakland Raiders. And maybe I'm crazy, okay? And this has probably been a mistake of mine throughout the season. Instead of trying to get most games right, I try to get every game right. And it's a little bit of a dumb strategy to take. But, man, I see an upset here. I like the Buffalo Bills to go to Oakland and get a huge victory here. And this is why. Okay, number one. The Raiders, to me, they're going to be peeking ahead, looking towards the next game against the Kansas City Chiefs. That is going to distract them a little bit from the opponent that is in front of their faces in the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills are a team that is second in the league in sacks right now. They don't let up many uh, yards per rush. Um, they don't let up a high passer rating. They've only allowed, like, I believe 13 or 14 uh, passing touchdowns on them the entire season. They're very good defensively. The Raiders, they give up 4.6 yards per carry. This Bills team, they love to run the football. LaShawn McCoy loves to run the football. He says, give me the ball, give me it, I want to run it. Tyrod Taylor says, oh, I want to run it too. And they run all over you. We've seen this Bills team go to Seattle, almost pull it out. Go to Miami, almost pull it out. Lately, this is last month we saw this. This Bills team is very dangerous on the road. They've been a little unfortunate here and there, but they could win more games than even their 6-5 and five record suggests. Man, and this Oakland Raiders team, they're very good. But I feel like they're due for a loss. So I like the Buffalo Bills to go to Oakland and get a huge win here. Maybe I'm going to regret this, and I probably will, because the Raiders have shown an ability to win games. Okay, when they need to win a game, when they need to beat you in the fourth quarter, they do that. That's their move. But man... I just have a feeling here that, man, the Buffalo Bills are going to get it done and defeat the Oakland Raiders. But then the Raiders are going to come back and beat the Chiefs next week in Kansas City. Let's move on to the New York Giants at the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I get it. I understand why everyone's picking the Steelers here and so am I. But I feel like everyone is really uh, not respecting the New York Giants here. I mean, they are plus six in this matchup. I think that is absurd. You look at this Giants team, what can they do? Their defense is very good. Their run defense is extremely good. They're going to slow down Le'Veon Bell, okay? They're also going to slow down Antonio Brown. And what happens when the Steelers get Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown slowed down? They don't do much because Sammy Coates and all of these other morons and the Steelers wide receiving core, they can't get open consistently. Sammy Colts, and if Marcus Wheaton is healthy, which he's probably not. Ladarius Green, who is hampered since he came back from his injury. They're not consistent enough. So, man, I don't know why everyone's so confident about this game. I'm picking the Steelers, but boy, oh boy, it's going to be close. And it would not shock me in the least if the New York Giants defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers here. Remember that. We move on to the Washington Redskins at the Arizona Cardinals. And this Cardinals team, I'm so frustrated. I picked them to win the damn Super Bowl, and they're not even damn close to doing that. And then upon further inspection, this team is so odd. They're so good statistically, so good. Like, they have a top three defense statistically. Uh, you know, their run game is very good statistically. I mean, they have stats abundant. The problem is they just can't win games. They don't know how to win games. And no one's talking about Bruce Arians, but you got to look at the coaching staff there. If you're that good statistically, there's a problem coaching if you can't win games. And also Carson Palmer, okay? Uh, and also, consider this. Who have the Cardinals beaten this season? The 49ers twice, 
the Jets and one impressive victory against who was it? I can't even remember, but it was an impressive victory. I can't. It was the Bucks. Okay, they beat the Bucks forty to seven week two. Okay, they haven't beaten anybody. I mean, they haven't beaten anybody. Ah, <sighs> when you look at this Washington Redskins team. Uh, they had a bye week last week. They can put it on you. <sighs> but the Cardinals are good at home, okay? They're 3-2-1 and one at home, I believe. They tied with the Seahawks. They lost to the Patriots, and they lost to the divisional matchup against the Rams. So they're very good at home. So I think my move now and from here on out is if the Cardinals on the road, I ain't picking them, okay? Uh, but... If they're at home, I'm probably going to pick them. They're at home here, so I'm going to pick them. But, man, it, it just it, so, it frightened me so much when I just looked at this Cardinals team say, what's wrong here? And then I realized they only had beaten the 49ers twice and the Jets. Man, that is scary. I mean, that is so, so scary. And they barely beat the 49ers one time. I mean, 23 to 20, that it scares the hell out of me. But F it, I'm just going to pick the Cardinals anyway. We move on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the San Diego Chargers. And I'm rolling with a hot hand. Look, I understand why everyone respects San Diego. And I didn't last week. And they burned me, right? They beat the Houston Texans. But the problem is, here's the thing with San Diego. Uh, you are what your record says you are, okay? Especially at this point. I, I can give you some slack if you start out 2-3 and three, or you start out 3-4. and four, But when you're 5-6, and six, you're a below 500 team. That's kind of just who you are, okay? That's who you are. This San Diego team. They can certainly win some games against the Tennessee Titans. And uh, they can upset the Broncos once. They can upset the Raiders once. They can upset the Chiefs once. But... This Bucks team is rolling. They're playing very well. They've won three straight games. They shut down the Seahawks last week. Their defense is playing spectacular. Jameis Winston is not turning the ball over. They're just playing better football to me. More winning football, more consistent football, more believable and reliable football. And I like the Bucks to go to San Diego and pick up the victory. We move on to the Carolina Panthers at the Seattle Seahawks. These Seahawks, uh, they did not look good last week at all. As they went to Tampa Bay and couldn't put up more than six. They put up five, okay? It was bad. Oh, so bad. Uh, now, they're back at home where they're good, okay? They're going to win. Uh, they're at home. They're going to win. The Panthers, though, I think they're going to be close again. I think they're going to make it interesting. But I think you're going to see they won't just be able to put up enough points against this Seahawks defense. And the interesting thing about the Panthers and Cam Newton, look at Cam Newton's career stats. You're going to see one outlier, and it was last season. I mean, he has been an average quarterback. I mean, just straight up average. Passer ratings in the 80s. And nowhere else except for last season where he had one uh, year of a, a pass rating of 99. He's an average quarterback. That's just who he is. So I'm going to stop talking about him. Well, so Wilson, on the other hand, while he hasn't thrown any touchdowns this season, he's still very good. They have, they have the better quarterback to me. They're the better team to me. Give me the Seahawks to win uh, this game. We move on to the Monday Night Football game. The Colts at the Jets. This won't be too fun. Um, it won't be too bad either, though, to be honest with you. The records aren't that bad, but I think their defenses are bad to the point where we're going to have a good amount of story of scoring in this game, and we'll enjoy it. Uh, so with that in mind, though, who do I have winning the game? And I like the Colts. Okay, the Colts, to me, you have Andrew Luck back healthy. Um, they're decent. Okay, they're very decent. They've, they're now 5-6, and six, but they lost last week because they had Scott Tolzien. I think with Andrew Luck, they're very competitive in that football game. Very competitive. Uh, now you're talking about Andrew Luck going up against this Jets defense. They haven't been great getting after the quarterback this season, as you would like to believe. Just looking at their lineup, they haven't been great at it. So I like the Colts and Andrew Luck to put up points on this defense to leave with the victory. Colts and Andrew Luck, I mean, they just they beat bad teams like this. That's their move. The problem is they can't beat the Patriots. They can't beat the great teams, the Steelers, whatever. Against these bad teams, oh, they can get it done. They will get it done. They defeat the New York Jets to me, who stink. All right, now let's move on to my Garen Dam tees of the week. Again, last week, I went 5-2 and two in my Garen Dam tees, and this week, I think we might have another 5-2 and two week. Let's make some money, and let's start in Jacksonville, as the Broncos are minus 3.5. Broncos, even with Paxton Lynch, they should take care of business. Blake Bortles is a loser, as Donald Trump would love to say. And the Broncos will get it done quite easily. We move on to the Detroit Lions. Plus six in New Orleans. Again, the Lions aren't getting enough respect here. Matthew Stafford and the Lions have not lost by seven or more this entire season. I don't see that starting this week. I like 
the Detroit Lions to win this game. Now, they did lose by seven once, but they haven't lost by more than seven. I like the Detroit Lions to cover here. Uh, we move on to the Kansas City Chiefs plus five. Uh, although I did say I like the Falcons to win this game, I think plus five is way too much for the Chiefs, man. I mean, they could win this game easily. It wouldn't shock me in the least. They've been very good. They've been winning games a lot of people didn't think they could win, like in Carolina and, and versus the uh, Denver Broncos last week. So uh, you got to take the Chiefs here plus five. We look at the Chiefs and Falcons right now. The over-under is set at 49. And you know me, I like to go under a lot. And I'm very correct with my over-unders this year. I like the under here. It's 49. Look, the Chiefs are going to limit the Falcons somewhat. And the Chiefs can't score points, okay? So that's the end of the discussion. To me, it'll be under 49. Worst case scenario to me, maybe the Chiefs win or the Falcons win 24 to 20. I think that's the most high scoring we're talking about here. Give me uh, the under here. We have the New York Giants plus six. Again, I like an underdog. Um, plus six here at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh hasn't been very dominant this season. The Giants are eight and freaking three. I think they, they're going to this game easily. Someone's going to win this game by a field goal. Give me the Giants plus six. Panthers plus seven. The Seahawks. Uh, they can win games at home easily. Uh, not easily, but they can win games at home. Um, you know, they beat the Bills by six. They beat the uh, Eagles by nine. But they never beat anybody by ten. And I like the Panthers to remain in this seven-point window. I if they get behind, I still expect them to get a garbage touchdown or two. That's their move. Uh, so I think they cover this plus seven. And then lastly, the Colts minus two. Again, I'm at the Colts to win this game. I'm pretty confident about that. In fact, damn well confident about that. So they should go to New York and win. So give me the Colts minus two. They should cover this one pretty easily. So there you go. Those are my NFL Week 13 picks and predictions. What are your words? Comment down below. I want to know if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe. And until next time, this has been the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment, and I'm out. Peace.